My name's Amanda Dizik and I am the co-founder of Hot House Glass Studio. We're in Heidelberg West and I've been blowing glass for nearly coming up to 20 years. We make a lot of production glass blowing, but most of my works always have a botanical theme. They're inspired by plant life, um, the patterns, the textures, the shapes. Sometimes those are the things we overlook, you know, that beautiful, perfect frond or leaf that is so perfect that you don't even really realise it because each one is gorgeous. And so I look for those kind of elements in my work and how to represent them. Just the stem. Yeah, so I'm just going to heat that and then what I do is go into the press mould. I started glass blowing as an elective when I was doing a visual arts degree. Then I was going to do a research residency in Ikebana in Japan in Tokyo, but I became obsessed with the back streets and all their tiny markets, and I really liked how they honoured the everyday it felt like. And so something simple as a radish, and then I wanted to elevate that and go with the everyday beauty. I don't necessarily replicate exactly what's in nature. I like to rely a little bit more on memory use that so it's not an identical replica. It never will be. I can't replicate nature. It's done it right the first time. I have lines like my Yunamiru vessels. They're based on a Japanese bonsai and they're, they're instantly identifiable as glass. But then the more exhibition works like the beets, the daikons, the botanical themed works, they push the boundaries a bit more. Some people might not think they're glass. So was it one dark and then um, two light? Yeah, do you want to actually do two rolls in the pistachio and then actually just one in those one little in chips? Yep, okay. I reckon that'll look nice. It's a craft, first and foremost, I think, and so you really need to hone your skills before you can even start translating that into a shape, into a design or an artwork. So you have to learn your technical skills before you can really start to sure. learn the language. It can be dangerous, but I think if you're smart about it and you know what the material can do and you have a respect for it, you're going to be fine. I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll start just building up the heat in it a little bit and we'll bend it slightly. We have two reheating chambers, also known as glory holes. So we're taking the material out of the furnace and then we're reheating that in the chambers to make our works because it has quite a quick cooling time. So to work it, you've got to constantly be heating it. The interesting thing about glass is that the colours heat at a different colour. So they'll look pretty much all orange. So now, because we've got such a solid piece, it actually have to wait a little bit for it to come away at that point. It's glass blowing, once you've got it down, you know what you're doing, it's more like a dance. Ready? If you watch a well-skilled production glass blowing team work together, there's lots of subtle movements. Everyone knows their place in the team. So really, once we know what we're doing, I shouldn't be instructing anyone at all. Everyone knows their roles. For me, the team in full flight is the most beautiful thing to watch. Plants can be, they can be food, they can be medicine, they can be shelter. 
I think there's so much variety. They're universal, I think, in their appeal, and that's what appeals to me about them.